In this video, we will continue our discussion about the steps of a risk assessment. In this part of the tutorial, we will begin by looking at control recommendations, which is the eighth step in the NIST outline for a cybersecurity risk assessment. In the previous sections, we had talked about gathering the information for performing a risk assessment and then doing the analysis work of determining the likelihood of a particular threat exploiting a vulnerability. What the impact of that exploit might be, and then determining what the overall risk was for each particular threat vulnerability pair to a particular asset. At this point, we will discuss the mitigation of those risks. Mitigation is accomplished through providing some type of control. When looking at controls and mitigation, it is important to understand that there are several options that can be determined with the mitigation. That could be that you accept a particular risk, and in that case, you do nothing. It might be a low-impact, low-likelihood risk, and therefore you determine that you don't want to do anything. It might be that it is too costly in terms of usage, and you determine that the risk has to be accepted because you have to allow users access to the system. You might determine to avoid a risk. You could do this by turning a service off. For example, you could turn off all unused ports or unneeded ports on a particular web server. You limit the risk. This is done by providing controls that prevent or detect a response, such as installing an intrusion detection system, or some other type of monitoring software, such as virus scanning software, those sorts of things. Transfer of a risk isn't something you see too much in the cybersecurity field, but this would be taking out insurance or something along those lines. It is a mitigation option when looking at risks. Factors that you need to consider when you are making your determination of controls to put in place for risk mitigation. What is the overall risk level, which we have talked about in the previous sections? What's the likelihood? What's the impact? That helps to determine what type of control needs to be put in place and how much effort needs to be made to mitigate a particular risk. What is the cost of the mitigation? It might be more expensive to implement a certain control than the resulting impact of a particular risk. For example, the control might be buying expensive network monitoring software or hardware for an event that is extremely unlikely to occur. A cost-benefit analysis needs to be performed when looking at each control for each risk that it is addressing. How long will it take to mitigate? If the mitigation is a long effort, say rewriting the entire software because security was not an issue at the beginning, it might not be worthwhile to pursue. If it is a short fix by changing one or two lines of code or something along those lines, that might help in determining whether the control should be used or not or how the controls should be implemented. How effective will the control be? This can be thought of in terms of passwords. Most experts agree that passwords are a bad way to secure a system, yet there aren't many viable options to go beyond passwords, or to use something other than passwords. These are the kind of factors you would need to look at. How effective will a particular control be at mitigating a risk? How will the controls impact the usability of a system? We have talked about this in previous sections of this tutorial. There is a constant tension between security and usability, and these factors need to be addressed by upper management and the leaders of the project. This is where back in the system characterization and understanding of what the goals management were and what the goals of the system were. When creating this risk assessment, if a control violates one of the goals, then it might not be a viable control to implement. The other important thing to do at this point is to look at getting the most bang for your buck. Are there single controls or sets of controls you can put in place that mitigate multiple risks? Are there simple procedures or policies that address a lot of risks? The next step after performing the control decision making is to actually produce a document the final risk assessment document. Now the question might be asked, why do we need to produce a document, especially if we have all these other documents? Well, as we talked about in previous sections of this tutorial, sometimes the risk assessment is needed to backfeed into previous steps of the current risk assessment. 
It helps to communicate to project leadership what is going on, where the security problems are in the system, and how particular controls and policies and procedures are needed to fix those risks. Documentation is always needed, and is always important, and is why you end up producing this risk assessment document. The other reason for producing a document is that it is needed for the long-term re-evaluation of the security plan. As we have talked about, risk management is an ongoing activity. It is not a one-time thing. This risk assessment is potentially the first in a series, so the next risk assessment will build off of this. It helps with the following risk assessment to look at what were identified in the previous ones and make the determination if the controls that were put into place actually mitigated the risk that you were addressing. It also helps to filling for new risk assessments and that determinations can be made over. Well, that risk really wasn't that serious of a threat as we thought it was. It just helps in the reevaluation process of an ongoing cybersecurity plan. In this video, we have looked at making determinations for the types of controls to put in place with the results of the risk assessment and the need to document the results. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CDSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.